everybody just do your thing. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Welcome, fabricators. We've talked about data agents before, back when it was called AI skills, and they are a fantastic way for us to create a retrieval augmentation generation or RAG pattern that allows us to use our data to have a custom agent to answer questions for us. But how do we get it outside of Microsoft Fabric? Well, there's two different ways that we can do this. One is for us to use Copilot Studio, and the other is for us to use AI Foundry. Today, I'm going to show you how we create a data agent, we publish it, and then we access it in AI Foundry. Enough talking about this. You know what we want to do. Let's look at this together. Here I am in my Microsoft Fabric workspace. I'm inside my movie lake house, and you can see I've got a box office table with a lot of information that we're going to use in our data agent to be able to ask it questions and get information back from it. So now that I've got my data, it's good to go. What we'll do is we will go to our workspace and we're going to say new item. And then we're going to go in here. We're going to filter on data agent and then we're going to select data agent preview. Let's go ahead and name this exactly what it is. TFTF underscore movie info for our data agent. Click create. Now we've got our data agent. Now that this is up, first thing we need to do to our agent is we need to add a data source. Let's go grab our lake house we were just looking at. Click add. And then we're going to go and I'm going to expand the lake house, expand the schema. Now let's get a little more space so I can see the name of all my tables, even though I only want my box office table. Once I do this, I'm also going to add some AI instructions. I love AI instructions because this is a prompt that I can send to the model for it to keep in mind and use before it answers any question. I'm specifically taking non-friendly column names that I have from a semantic nature, and I'm giving it instructions on how to interpret this movie title, running total, number of theaters, what these equate out to from a column perspective. Now that I've got my instructions in place, let's ask some questions. What movie made the most money on a day? Now, I do actually have this in my data set. I don't have every movie, but the movie that made the most money in a day is Avengers Endgame, $157 million in one day. I can also open this up and I can see the query it used to be able to find this. This is important because if it wasn't correct, I could actually answer the question and, and change the underlying query to be able to help instruct the agent how to be able to use this. My next question is, what are the top 10 movies on a holiday and how much money did they make? You can see I, I get a nice list back. Um, I've even got the query that it used to be able to pull this back. And now I want to ask a question because it didn't include the holiday. I'd actually like to know the holiday uh, for this. So I can see uh, Star Wars The Force Awakens made the most money ever on a holiday on Christmas Day. And then it kind of goes down from there. It's very, very interesting stuff. Now that I've got this sorted out, I need to publish it. Otherwise, I can't access the agent. I'm going to add some information about the agent so it's easy for us to find or for the other agent to know what it's used for. This is an agent that answers questions about the domestic box office for movies in the United States and Canada. So that's what my data set is based off of. I go ahead and publish this. Now that this is published, I need a foundry. So let's go to Azure. In the Azure portal, I can go under Azure services. I can go up in the search bar. I've already got a foundry provision that I'm using for other things, but I'm going to create a new one from scratch. We're going to say create a resource. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to create a new resource group for this. Uh, we're going to keep it simple and simple. Uh, TFTF movies, because yeah, we're doing movie stuff, right? And then uh, I'm going to leave the default region in place. For the name, let's make this sound exactly what it is. TFTF underscore foundry. We'll leave the first project what it is. Didn't like the underscore. Should have left that out. Let's just get rid of that. And then I'm going to click next. I'm going to leave the defaults for the majority of everything, but we could configure this quite a bit from network. Uh, we could make it behind a private endpoint identity. We could use a user assigned or a system assigned identity. We could use customer keys for encryption tags. I'm just going to go ahead and click review and submit to begin with. And then I'm going to click create. You don't need to watch this provision. Let's just go straight to the resource. I come over here. There's a lot of different settings that we could configure post. I'm going to go ahead and open this up and we're in Foundry Studio. I've got a ton of information here on this first screen and some of it we'll be using later. But what I want to do is I want to create an agent. Now, when I go and create an agent for the first time, if you don't have a model, we're going to have to create one. I select a GPT 4.0 model for us to utilize. And I'm going to go ahead and click confirm. Now that this is going to be deployed after I click deploy, right? Uh, it's going to be deployed and I have an agent that can utilize this model. So let's click on the agent 
And what we need to do is add a knowledge base. And specifically, we've got a lot of settings we could set, but I'm going to knowledge because I want to add Microsoft Fabric. And I want to create a connection to our data agent that we just created. So how do we do that? Well, we need the workspace ID and artifact. How do we get that? Well, we come back over to Microsoft Fabric and what we need is our URL. We need the workspace ID from our URL and the GUID from our artifact ID, which is our agent essentially. So we need those two pieces of information. Armed with that, we can come back and fill this out. We put in our workspace GUID, we put in our artifact ID GUID, then we just need to name the connection. Let's make it simple, exactly what it is for this connection, tftf underscore movie info. We create connect, and this will create our connection to our data agent. Boom, there we go. A little bit of fabric magic right there, right? We are connected to the data agent. Well, now we need to play around with it, right? We wanna make sure that this actually works. So what we'll do is if we scroll up, there's an option to say, try in playground. We're gonna try this in the Foundry playground. It connects and we're gonna ask a question. What movie made the most money on a day? This is a good sign right away. I can see the bot is using the fabric data agent. And that's exactly what I expected, Avengers Endgame. Now we can also take a look at that, but we wanna look at the run info. This shows us the threads that were running by the agent. And most importantly, we can see our fabric data tool and there's that information. That's the information that was sent back from the data agent to us. The key is that we recognize that it was done by the fabric data agent. If it made a different knowledge base uh, connection, we would want to adjust that either in the instructions or in some other way. So let's ask our next question. Now, very interestingly, we got back a different set of data. Now we could actually adjust this if we wanted to by going to the data agent, but I actually like this. It's pulling back the, um, the gross amount that actually occurred per day. And so what was the gross amount that happened per day? Well, it looks like Memorial Day, Easter Sunday, Independence Day, Martin Luther King Day, Independence Day. So we've got some repeats here. So we can start to see why it's so important that movies come out in the summer, right? Okay, so going back to agents, let's go to my threads. And the threads are going to be anytime we submit something to an agent. It's got all the information that we put together here. But let's look at Try and Playground because it will allow us to be able to load this up and also see what these individual steps were. So if we're ever calling from an API or from something else and we're going, hey, how did the agent answer this question? And we wanna make sure it's using our RAG pattern and our data that we provided using the Fabric agent, we can check it and we can validate. Fantastic stuff. Okay, sound off. You know where we wanna keep this going? Down in the comments. I wanna hear from you. Was this helpful? Are you interested in this? What else would you like to see? We've got more to play with. Copilot Studio is coming up next. Uh, and then we're going to expand this even more and talk about how we get that out of Copilot Studio and how we can also get this out of AI Foundry. Thank you so much for joining us on Tales from the Field. As always, be good to one another out there. Bye, everybody. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up.